Thank you for your patience. Well, we have some other plans for today, but so many people and so many signatures for me, but it's uh, been a great experience being here in Lithuania. Uh, for me, it's a great pleasure and an honor. And I didn't know that I have uh, so much uh, readers from my book, so very glad about that. Thank you all, and maybe if you have a couple of questions, it will be better, and I will be, it will be my pleasure to ask you to have one. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, what is the second well, for me, it's very important to uh, tell the true experiences being the son of Pablo Escobar because I didn't want to repeat my father's story. So I hope that anyone who can read the book can understand and learn the same lessons that we learn as a family and as a country also. Yeah. You can see that uh, this book is also, in a way, uh, it is telling about your father and his work, and in a way, it's creating a legend about him. What do you think about it? Well, I'm trying to do the opposite, you know, to create a legend, just to talk about a human being, as uh, to talk about Pablo Escobar, about my father, not a uh, legend. I don't believe in legends, I believe in human beings. And I think that, uh, that's, that's the, the most important thing, not to believe that we are talking about a legend, we are talking about a true story uh, that happened in Colombia in the early 80s, and we have so much to learn from that, so for me that's so much important. What is your biggest lesson that you have? What is the just from your country? Well, as I, as I wrote in the end of the book, uh, I have to thank my father for showing me uh, the path that I should not take, so I think that's, that's the best lesson that we learned. Mm -hmm. Coming to last question, yeah. uh, uh, is what what is the hardest thing uh, living in the way that you are living uh, with with the father that you have? What is, is the hardest thing? Because Sanjasa, he put it on the Well, I believe is uh, the hardest thing is to maintain peace, even if uh, somebody from outside. Uh, invites you to become a uh, violent. Has that? Uh, when the film, the Narcos, yes, uh, when you're feeling it's uh, 100 uh, of the truth when you're seeing that in the Narcos about your uh, fabulous about. Well, I wrote about uh, 28 mistakes about the second season of Narcos. I didn't want to write the uh, mistakes for the, for the first season because it was, it was going to be too long. So I prefer just to say that they are not telling the truth. Um, they are uh, glorifying crime and glorifying my father's actions and his violence. So I didn't think that's the way to present my father's story. If anyone could read my book and still want to be Pablo Escobar, so I did a, a really bad job as a writer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what is your most memorable memorable memory from your past life? Well, I, I just uh, have to say that I miss my father as a father, as a friend, and I miss uh, the family when we were together, all together. So I think that's the strongest memory that I have. Do you get together with your family nowadays? No, uh, not, not with my father's family, because they betrayed him. So there's no, no love there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your 
your work right now? My family is my wife, my son, and my mother, and my sister, and of course, my mother's family. They are true friends and loyal, but the rest of the family, I wish that I could say some good things about them, but that's, you know, I would be lying. How old are you was when you leave the Columbia? Well, I had, uh, it was the year 1994, um, 17 years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not, do people judge you by your mistakes? Of course, they do. <laughs> I have to pay every day for my father's <laughs> mistakes. That's, uh, but I try to approach the people to approach my father's victims and to ask uh, for their forgiveness, because I believe it is a way of healing all the hate and all the violence. I understood that when he met a priest, he decided to go and to say about his that works. And, and I, as I read your book, you speak a lot about praying, about asking forgiveness. So could you tell us about your connection with faith? Well, I have, we have to, to have a very good connection with faith because being alive for us is like a miracle because everybody wanted us dead as a family. So we survived uh, thanks to faith and, and thanks to the love that we have inside our, our house and our family. And do you still feel danger? Like, do you have to hide? I know that you change your name. And... I have, we have to change our names because nobody in the airlines uh, would sell us tickets to get out of the violence that was pursuing us as a family in Colombia. So we had just to change our names because there was a lot of prejudice in the world for this family. But changing our names, it is not uh, um, denying the, the, father, the love that we felt for our father, so it's a different thing. When you were a boy, have you actually set up your father to be like him? Or was that just made up in the TV show? Oh, that's the TV show. They are telling so much times. <laughs> but I try to... Uh, once I tried to avenge my father because there was only 10 minutes of my life and I was thinking about that but I realized that uh, that won't be a good future for me and uh, neither for my family or for my country so I believe in peace since then. How did you decide not to be your father? Who really inspired you? Okay. <coughs> I think he was also inspiring me uh, not to be like him because he was always encouraging me to study, to do something else. He never tried to uh, teach me how to do his own work. So he was always telling me, you have to study, you have to take the opportunities that I could, could pay. So he never wanted uh, me to be like him. Your father was a very rich man. He had a lot of money, a lot of houses. Everything is lost. Yes, everything is lost. And the sad thing is that uh, all the properties that were in hands of the government, they never used that kind of properties to repair my father's victims. So that's sad because they took that away from us. And uh, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm not going to fight against that. But they should do something good with that, not just steal from us, for them, as a politician. So, mm -hmm. uh, because of that is what I say, is that the politicians are the well-organized, right? Corruption. Oh yeah, corruption, corruption everywhere. Everything is still. Yeah. Have you ever counted like, how many victims there were, or how many damage uh, was made? But there, there are, you, you cannot find a list, a victim list in Colombia. <coughs> and I believe that's because uh, the government uh, or the Colombian state doesn't want to repair them. So if you can uh, find a list, you don't have uh, somebody to repair. 
And you personally, you, you didn't try like, to meet them? Yes, I've been looking for all of them, and I met a lot of, of victims. I made a documentary called Sins of My Father, and I approached to my father's uh, most prominent victims, and, uh, Rodrigo Lara Bonillas, uh, Minister of Justice, who was killed by my father. Uh, I approached to his sons, and also to a presidential candidate, uh, Luis Carlos Galán. <coughs> So I, I had the opportunity to, um, to spoke with them. I wrote them a, a letter to ask for their forgiveness, and we met each other, and we still have some contact. And after that, I had the experiences of uh, connecting some of the victims and meeting them uh, all over the world. In almost every country, there is a victim of my father. So it's a hard job, but I am approaching to them with lots of respect. And I always ask them uh, uh, for their forgiveness, and I told them that I was never, uh, I never felt uh, proud of my father's actions. This guy. Maybe one more question about your yes. sister. I'm sorry for. Thank you for helping us with your questions. Yes. How, how is your sister? What is she doing now? Well, she she lives a very quiet life, and she has the right to maintain the low profile and I think I think that she's a clever in the family. Uh, do you feel like being exposed to extreme wealth in the, your young age has changed you as a person in some way? I believe not because there was a lot of love uh, inside my family. Even if there was a lot of money, uh, we had so much love and my father really did a, a good job. Uh, I think with me and as a human being, he raised me with the values he lacked. You know, he didn't have uh, uh, so much love outside for lots of people, but inside our home, he was a very gentle man and a kind father, a real good friend for me. So uh, I, I don't believe that, but I do believe that money, if I had uh, the, my father's money, Maybe I, I could think differently as an adult, uh, but as a kid, uh, that didn't affect me. Either. Can you ever talk to your father that he should change? Yeah, thousands of times. Thousands. Yes, so much times, but he never listened. He paid attention, but he never listened to me. And no, neither to my mother, to anybody. Nobody could stop him, really. He was a man who was making his own law. So it was impossible to stop him. And were there any reasons for that? Maybe he told He was always full of reasons and excuses for violence. I was, when I asked him to stop, uh, you know, just putting some bombs all over the cities, I asked him to stop. And he answered that, uh, that I should remember that the first bomb that, would, that exploded in Colombia was against me, my mother, and my sister. So he was full of excuses for violence. But I told him that I never believed that that would give me the right to put bombs to everyone. And your mother, did she also? Yeah, uh, she did um, better than me. And I think she was the, the, the woman who really spoke with my father about the consequences of the violence. But it was the same, he would never listen.